Um, today, I wanted to briefly take some time to talk about Verity's Brow, uh, which is, uh, I would say, objectively the best team play based grenade exotic in Destiny 2. And um, some of my friends have mentioned that uh, because, especially nowadays in speedrunning and a, a lot of new damage strategies, uh, Verity's Brow is taking a greater and greater role and presence in these strategies, that I should try to talk about Verity's Brow, show people how it works. Uh, really at a at a fundamental level and then show people some like examples of how they can use it effectively because it really is a really really great exotic um, that that really balances uh, rapid kills paying attention using your buff correctly and a really really massive reward <laughs> so let's uh, let's talk about Verity's Brow so Verity's Brow right right off the bat let's read the exotic description Right, so it says the fourth magic weapon final blows with a damage type matching your subclass energy grant death throws, which provides a grenade damage bonus and grants you grenade energy. When you have death throws and throw a grenade, nearby allies, uh, allies gain greatly increased grenade regeneration for a short time. So there's kind of two parts to this, right? There's a self buff, and then there's a buff that you give to others. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like in game right now. So let's go, let's go up here, right? And I'm going to throw my grenade. And you can see that I have nine discipline right now. The recharge, it's pretty slow, right? It's, it's not very fast, right? Um, just to kind of speed things up, I'm going to put on Starfire and get my grenade back real quick. So I have my grenade back right now. And let's switch back to Verity's Brow. And now let's get five kills with a solar weapon, which matches my subclass, which is solar. So I have Zephyrus X4, and now I'm going to get my fifth stack, and when I throw my grenade, you'll see that that's pretty fast, right? That, um, it's not super fast, it's not like it comes back instantly, but um, it does give me um, grenade regen that is, I would say, significantly faster, right? Significantly faster than uh, if I had not had any death row stacks. So that's the self buff portion. It also boosts your grenade damage by double. Um, so when you throw a grenade, it'll do it'll do twice the damage to an enemy if you have five death throw stacks. Okay. So even if you were doing something solo and you had no friends around with you, uh, Verity's Brow is still a pretty good um, just general gameplay exotic because if you're doing an activity where you get a lot of kills that match your subclass, um, it does give you a relatively decent amount of grenade regeneration and it doubles your grenade damage as well so you know it's not a bad exotic now let's talk about buffing others so i have some video examples of this okay so if we go ahead and let's take a look at the uh, destiny data compendium right you'll see that verity's brow has a much more detailed description so like we said you know death throws last 11 seconds goes up to five stacks and you get 50 percent additional grenade regen rate per stack and then 20% increased grenade damage per stack for a total of 250% grenade regen at 5 stacks and 100% increased grenade damage at 5 stacks. So double the damage like I said. Now you'll notice here it says allies within 20 meters of the caster when somebody uses a grenade with death throws active receive field of flame granting them 1000%. Yeah, you read that right. 1,000% additional base grenade recharge rate for 5 seconds. Okay? And it says the buff is applied continuously, but we'll discuss what that means in a second. But think about that. 1,000% additional base grenade recharge rate. Okay? There is nothing else in the game right now that gives you that high of a grenade recharge rate for that long. Okay? The only things that would come anywhere near close, right, are, I would say, Starfire, because Starfire is based on hits and not based on regen. And then you have Controverse Hold, which if you take a look here, it's 2,000%, but it's for 1.75 seconds, and it has a cooldown. So that's a little bit different, right? And then if we go to Heart of Inmost Light on Titan, you get 800% base grenade regen rate increase if you have two times empowered grenade. Now, if you're paying attention, you might see where I'm going with this, because Heart of Inmost Light is a team, is a, sorry, is a self buff, and Verity's Brow Field of Flame is a team buff, which means you can stack the two together, okay? And so the reason why Verity's Brow is so powerful as a team play exotic specifically is because I mentioned that the, the self buffs are not amazing. They're good, but they're not amazing, 
right? Like if you were doing uh, solo content or you were just by yourself and you were on solar, you'd probably choose to be on Starfire. And if you're on Void, you'd probably choose to be on something like Controverse, right? For the, for the aforementioned reasons. But as soon as you involve teammates, you can start doing things like this. So I'm going to give you an example of the recipient's POV. So if you notice on my screen right now, there's a buff called Field of Flames. It's kind of hard to see. I'll full screen this video. It's kind of hard to see, but you see a buff called Field of Flames. And that buff is actually me receiving Field of Flames from my teammates who are Verity Warlocks, giving me the grenade throw buff. And now if you take a look here, look how quickly I can throw grenades. I can throw grenades very, 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 very quickly. It's, it's like spamming grenades pretty much, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm stacking the Empowered Grenade X2 buff with the throw rate buff from Verity's Brow. And those two things stack together. They stack, I believe, multiplicatively. And that makes it so that in certain activities, if you have another grenade throw multiplier, like firepower or like into the light, you can essentially throw grenades faster than the game will physically let you throw them. So I'll give you another example. So that one, in that example, I just wanted to show you the field of flames showing up on the screen. I'll give you another example from Bow the Disciple, which is even faster. So let me let me just grab that for you real quick. Uh, let me go Eclipse, Vow. And then um, this is a good example because in Vow the Disciple, you have Into the Light mods, which also increase grenade regenerate. And so that's three multipliers on your grenade regenerate. So take a look right over here and just watch how fast I can throw grenades when damage starts, right? So I'm essentially just, look at my, look at my grenade cooldown meter, right? It's already full. My, my ability is already completely refunded. I physically cannot throw though. It's not allowing me to throw my grenade, despite the fact that I have my complete ability back. Take a look at that. So it's it's a ridiculous it's a ridiculous ridiculous throw rate uh, that you get with Verities. Okay. So um, I think I need to move away from these enemies in patrol because they are being a bit loud. I'm gonna be right over here. Okay. So yeah, that's what Verity's Brow looks like on the receiving end if you use something like Heart of Inmost Light. Now, something that a lot of people up until now didn't really think about is that Verity's Brow, the Field of Flame buff, only lasts 5 seconds. And as a Warlock that has Verity's Brow on, if you have no Grenade Regen buff besides just the 250% that Verity's Brow itself provides you, then you're not going to get a grenade every 5 seconds, which means you're not going to be able to refresh Field of Flame solo for a team that wants to damage for more than 5 seconds. So... Why not use two Verities? And then we found out that Verity's Brow, Field of Flame, can be applied to other Warlocks that have Verities on, which allows them to constantly be throwing grenades to constantly reapply Field of Flame. So if you take a look right here, you'll see that as soon as I throw my grenade, I get Field of Flame's X4 on my screen. And then that means, so okay, Field of Flame, the way Field of Flame works is that if you throw near teammates, sorry, if you throw near teammates as a Verity's Brow user, you give them Field of Flame, and that also appears on your screen. So the number of people that you are giving Field of Flame to appears as stacks on your screen. So as a recipient, you will only see Field of Flame X1. You're not going to see X1. It'll just say Field of Flame. But as a giver, right, as a Verity's user, when you throw your grenade and you give your teammates Field of Flame, you will see the number of users on your team that are getting the buff on your, buffs, on your, on your buff display. Okay? And now you'll also see here in a second, I believe... I guess not. Okay. Oh, there you go. Field of Flames X5. Okay. Um, I believe Field of Flames X5, that, that's just... Um, right now, actually, there's only... There's five players in the encounter. As you can see, Crow or Sure is up there. So, um, I think this is either uh, a bug um, because I am reapplying Field of Flames to my teammate. So, it's, it's kind of going over that cap. Uh, or it's the fact that my teammate is giving me Field of Flame as well. So instead of displaying Field of Flames X4 and then Field of Flames separately, they stack on top of each other, which is why it says X5. Um, I believe that's why it says X5 there. So I wanted to address that in case somebody might get confused over that. Um, so yeah, that is how you can implement Field of Flames in a raid boss type of scenario where a bunch of people are trying to do damage and you want to keep that grenade throw rate buff as high uptime as possible. You want two Verity's Brow Warlocks. Okay, so that's number one, right? Now, me and my friend Ritz have started experimenting with Verity's Brow in GMs. 
So I had this idea where I could use um, heat rises and you know touch of flame and fusion grenades and Galahorn in GMs with Verity's Brow, and it it's amazing. It's very very good. Uh, Verity's Brow is fantastic, especially when you are fueling a, a Titan on Heart of Inmost Light. Um, we were essentially, you know, me and Ritz, we were both running Verity's Brow, and we were, you know, spam throwing grenades all the time with death throw stacks, and the Titan next to us was essentially just, they weren't even using their heavy weapon, they were just spamming um, grenades everywhere, like Heart of Inmost Light Storm grenades, which are obviously very strong right now. So um, that's why this is such a, a great strat, such a, a powerful strat. Uh, it can apply to pretty much anything in the game where you just want to destroy enemies with grenades, which are, of course, uh, very, very strong right now. Um, okay, so that being said, that's how you would implement Verity's Brow. I also want to talk about um, one other thing that people often get mixed up with, with Verity's Brow. And that is how the Field of Flame buff actually works. So you may notice that if you try to use Verity's Brow in raid boss scenarios, that the people who are receiving Field of Flame often have it go down, despite the fact that both Warlocks are on Verity's Brow and are getting stacks. So the reason for that is because Field of Flames is a kind of unique buff, or Field of Flame, I should say. Uh, we just call it Feel. But um, Feel is a pretty unique buff in how it's applied and how it's reapplied and how it's taken away. Because most buffs in the game, number one, are not given to you by teammates, Number two, most of them have a fixed duration and a fixed location, okay? So what do I mean by that? Well, if your teammates give you Radiant, for example, like they solar melee an enemy and they have Ember of Torches on, and they give you Radiant, you will have Radiant for a certain amount of time on your screen, regardless of where you go, regardless of whether your teammate dies, regardless of whatever your teammate does. You're going to have Radiant for as many seconds as it says on your screen, and it's always going to behave the same way for the duration of that buff. Now, Verity's Brow and Field of Flame work a little bit differently. Verity's Brow is a buff that is entirely based on the Warlock that throws the grenade to give the Verity's Brow buff, Field of Flame. So how it works is when the user throws a grenade, there is a big sphere that has an 18 meter radius around that Warlock for 5 seconds. It's like a, Imagine a big globe, a big globe around that Warlock, 18 meter radius, and that globe exists for 5 seconds. So even if a Titan, for example, enters this globe when that globe has three seconds left, right? Let's say the Warlock throws a grenade, you know, and waits two seconds. And the Titan at two seconds enters their globe. The Titan will then have that buff for three seconds, okay? It doesn't refresh when you go into the globe and get that buff for the first time. It is based on when the Warlock throws their grenade. So that's number one, okay? Number two. Verity's Brow is dynamically applied and reapplied based on your position relative to the sphere that surrounds the Warlock. So for example, if I was on Titan, and if I dipped in and out of the bubble repeatedly like so, I would get the buff and lose the buff, and get the buff and lose the buff, and get the buff and lose the buff. It's kind of like a Precious Scars Overshield, or like a, a Ward of Dawn, right? You only get Armor of Light when you're in the bubble. Right? If you're if you're playing PvP or you know you have a Ward of Dawn on your team like a bubble, you only get that Armor of Light buff when you're in the bubble, right? And uh, when that bubble goes away, if you try to go back into the bubble where the bubble was, you're not going to get Armor of Light anymore. So think about Verity's Brow as like a big bubble that moves around with the person that casts it, and the duration of the bubble is 5 seconds. Okay, that's number 2. Number 3 is that Verity's Brow is affected by Line of Sight, okay? So Line of Sight includes walls, so objects, and it also includes enemies. So, for example, if Caretaker, which is a really big boss, happens to step between the Warlock and a Titan. So, let's say, you know, a Titan is here. And Caretaker, you know, his, his chunky ass decides to kind of like, you know, you're on, you guys are on the plate together. And he's, he decides to kind of walk through this way. If he obstructs the view between the Verity's Brow Warlock and the Titan, Field of Flames will go down. That's part of the reason why we uh try our best to have caretaker be a little bit distance from us when we do damage during a uh, valid disciple uh, during caretaker because we don't want to lose our field of flame spot that's part of the reason why when he's close to us one flooring is often a lot more much harder right and then finally 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 um verity's brow field of flame cannot be refreshed okay it cannot be refreshed while that five second duration is occurring so this can be problematic why can this be problematic because let's say both of your warlocks throw their grenade at the exact same time right when the five second timer of field of flame from the first application is used up then 
both the Warlocks don't have Field of Flame anymore, and they both don't have a grenade to reapply Field of Flame. So that means that both your Warlocks have to pace when they throw their grenade correctly, so that as soon as Field of Flame goes down, they still have a grenade with Death Throw stacks ready to get that uptime right back up. Okay, so what does this mean? It means that maybe as a Warlock using Verity Bra Verity's Brow, if you know that, you know, you're in, a, in an encounter where you're not going to get your grenade back very fast because you're not using firepower, you don't have Into the Light, then you need to be extra careful when you're throwing that second or third grenade when you're spamming your grenade for damage. Because if Field of Flame goes down and you're caught with your pants hanging down and you don't have a, a, a grenade to refresh Field of Flame, you're going to be in trouble, okay? So that's kind of important. That's actually very, very important, I would say. That's probably the most important thing I've mentioned so far because it also applies to GMs as well and whenever you want to use Verity's Brow with multiple Warlocks. You need to pay attention to save a grenade for when Field of Flame is out. So you can, you know, willy-nilly throw like maybe two or three grenades during that five second duration where you have Field of Flame from the other Warlock. But the second Field of Flame goes down, you need to remember to have a grenade to continue that chain of giving each other Field of Flame. Okay, so that is um, all I wanted to say for, for Verity's Brow and the advanced application of the aura and the refreshing and the, and the kind of cycling that you do with other Warlocks. Okay. Now, I'm going to briefly talk about what weapons and what subclasses are best for Verity's Brow, and then, um, and then we'll be done, okay? So, subclass-wise, I would say um, Solar is easily the best, right? Solar has a ton of weapons, and it's multiple reasons, right? Solar Warlock, you have Well of Radiance, which is, you know, fueled by Touch of Flame Fusion Grenades, which are easily the most potent grenades that Warlocks have uh, in terms of, you know, packing a punch, doing a crap load of damage in a very instant fashion. You know, Warlocks, Fusion Grenades, Touch of Flame, obviously a great choice, right? Healing Grenades also provide uh, some interesting, um, you know, advantages to teams. Um, because Touch of Flame Healing Grenades, obviously, only source, only consistent source <clears throat> of Tier 2 Restoration in the game left. And uh, they're very, very potent. And on Verity's Sprout, you can spam them. And using a Healing Grenade, even if it doesn't do damage, still um, uh, procs Field of Flame right so if your weapon if your weapon loadout is mostly about ad clear and you don't really need your grenades for ad clear then consider using healing grenades on verity's brow because uh they're very strong they're very strong and you can basically spam healing grenades ritz was doing that during one of the our gm clears recently so i thought that was a a great use of verity's brow so that's also something to consider um on warlock i'd say the other subclasses arc warlock obviously not very strong right now in the sandbox if they ever buff it or you know decide to change stuff with it maybe to be worth using especially with weapons like forbearance and salvo uh, being very, very strong contenders for um, getting stacks quickly, right? And they have, of course, the new Arc Trace Rifle, Path of Least Resistance. Uh, and then you have Void and Stasis, okay? Stasis, um, I'm actually kind of interested to see uh, someone use, like, Q-Limbs Terminus or, like, maybe the new Stasis Waveframe that looks like it's going to come out in Lightfall and um, just spam Stasis Turrets. Spam the fuck out of Stasis Turrets, have, like, 10 up at a time. Because, the, theoretically, with Verity's Brow, two of them fueling each other, uh, you would have way more stasis turrets than an Osmiomancy firepower build, right? So I think that'd be funny. I think that'd be funny to watch. Uh, I don't think it would be particularly effective, but I think it would be funny. Uh, and finally, Void Warlock. Um, I think uh, Verity Void is actually quite good, uh, especially on Void Burn activities like GMs. Um, however, it's not uh, as potent as Solar, right? And obviously your, your super that you're fueling with Ashes to Assets is not as strong. Um, but I think, you know, having a uh, Verity's Warlock fuel a an Aeon Void Warlock, right? Because I, I tend to think that Void Warlock is the best Aeon subclass, actually, because of its easy access to Devour and Invis Finisher. Um, but, you know, I, I think, you know, having a Verity's Warlock pair with an Aeon Void Warlock is really strong. Um, other pairings you can do, obviously, Heart of Inmost Light Titan on any subclass, but if, especially Arc is really good. And then um, Hunters, you know, Hunters don't really have really, really strong grenades right now. Uh, really grenade-enhancing aspects that much. Um, I guess you could do, like, Young Amkara spawning, but at that point, it's like, you know, just use a, a different class if you play different classes, right? Um, that's pretty much it. And finally, I want to mention weapons, right? So let's, let's close this dock because I don't really need it anymore. But I want to mention weapons. So because you're largely going to play, be playing Solar Warlock when you're on Verity's Brow, there's a couple weapons that are really strong. Um, I would say any osmosis weapon that has, you know, very, very strong ad clear potential, uh, it's just a good idea, right? So like succession with osmosis is a good idea because, you know, if you have like a solar trace rifle, but you, you want to kill an ad that has more health, uh, to refresh a stack or an ad that's really far away, an osmosis succession can, can save your ass, 
uh, in that case. However, that's kind of niche. So kinetic weapons, we're not going to go over too much, right? Now, the other two slots, obviously, our energy weapons can be solar, right? Um, and a bunch of the weapons that are really good for that are here, right? So retrace path, that's number one, right? Retrace path, good range, has demo, uh, kills with adds relatively quickly, great ammo economy. So, you know, makes for an ideal choice and it's very precise, right? So if you only want to kill one ad and you don't want to splash kill other ads by accident, like you would with a rocket or a waveframe, then retrace path is great because let's say you're in an encounter like caretaker with not too many ads present and you want to be very very careful with how many ads you kill and what time retrace path is a great pick for that right solar snipers are also a great pick same reason for ariana's vow ariana's vow is essentially a solar sniper where you don't mind using your exotic slot and it just has more ammo and it's just you know easier to kind of shoot with because it's hand cannon zoom levels um solar snipers are also great for uh, just picking off enemies one by one um yeah, nothing much else to say about that. Solar fusion rifle, kind of niche, but you know, another option. Callus mini tool. Callus mini tool is also not a bad option either. I would just maybe take off incandescent if you're trying to be precise. But again, you'd probably use a trace rifle in that instance. And finally, explosive personality. Explosive personality is a great option, especially for GMs where a trace rifle will not kill ads quickly enough to really um, to really get stacks fast enough and uh, like to really save your ass, right? Like, let's say you're at like three seconds left on your timer. You're, you really got to get a stack fast. A trace rifle might not be able to kill an ad, a red bar quickly enough in a GM to really get that going for you. So uh, explosive personality is great for that. And um, then obviously in your heavy weapon, part of the reason why solar verity is so good is because you have so many good heavy weapons for this, right? You have solar rockets, you have solar machine guns, like fixed odds, which I don't have crafted, so it's not here. Um, if they ever make a solar eager sword, that would be a good option as well. Um, but I put a solar scar here as a placeholder. Xenophage is fantastic, right? Hit scan weapon, instantly kills any red bar in the game. Solar, explosive damage, like it's perfect, right? And then you have G-Horn, another very, very obvious pick because in, in GMs, you're probably running a G-Horn uh, if you're running rockets. So why not have it be your Verities player, right? And then Lament. I put Lament here kind of as a joke because I, I do it sometimes, Lament Verities. But, um, you know, probably not the best option. So, you know, a great example would be like, you know, I was running this for day one conquerors uh, this season. I just ran this for like all of them. I didn't even run on stop GL. We just melted everything, right? Like, fuck the champs. We just, we just melted all of them. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions about Verity's Brow, let me know. I know this is kind of a, a long video, but, um, you know, my friends, they were like, people need to know about how Verity's Brow works. And I was like, okay. Um, all right. See you later.